We are going to keep moving right now, and it's time to get to our message. Uh, so, look, I know you've only just sat down, but can I ask you to jump on your feet one more time? Because we have the privilege of having Pastor Tam bringing a word on this Valentine's Day. Listen to that. Great job, church. Over to you, Tam. Oh, thanks, guys. You can be seated. Thanks, Tam. Hey, just a shout out, young ads, if you're young in the room, which is all of us, right? Head to, head to Grilled, 11.30 today, North Lakes, Rach and her team will be sitting there waiting for you. Oh, let me do this thing with this iPad. I might need some help. I'm like a paper person and the iPad cover thing. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing it right. But head to Grilled, uh, North Lakes, 11.30, Rach will see you there. Don't you love tech and all the little, you know, all the young people are like, Tam, it's just an iPad cover. Yep, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Hey, um, Connect Groups, they are kicking back and it's awesome. Ours kicked back last Wednesday night and um, we love it. We've been in different Connect Group circles over all of our time at Hope and every season that I'm in, God's led me to a group and it's just really um, helped us grow. So I really encourage you to talk to Deb today. But um, on Wednesday night in our connect group, someone walked in and we were, just, we were just chatting before we got into it and they shared a story and I was actually praying, asking God for an intro for my sermon and it was like he just brought the person in and shared a story and I was like, that's going to be my intro. Thank you, Lord. Um, but she just shared this story and it was an elderly couple on Valentine's Day and each year they go up to the card section in the shops and they stand in the front of the card section and they choose a card for one another and then they open it up and they read it to each other. Then they give each other a kiss on the cheek and then they pop the card back and walk away. I thought that is genius on so many levels, on so many levels. I was thinking about this. One, save money. Two, all the greenies out there saving paper. you got to love that one. And three, that you don't just do it for your anniversary. You can do it for birthdays. You can do it for like thank you, for sympathy, for kids' birth. You could Families. You could get the whole family up and just, which birthday card would you like, son? And just read it to them. I thought that's epic. I'm gonna, I don't know if we're gonna use that, babe, but maybe. <laughs> if he drags me to the shop and puts me in the front of the card section, maybe it might happen. And then another thing that I heard just this week was an elderly couple, since the day they met, have been dancing in the living room with each other every single day. And they're in the UK, and apparently that's gone viral. So, seniors in the room you're like leading us you're you're like leading the pack so I just thought that were two funny stories so there you go there's your laugh for the day <laughs> so um you know it you know these stories are all you know they're well and cute yeah they're well and cute but I'm gonna throw a but in after this they're all well and cute but loving each other can be hard work. It can be hard work. Is anyone in agreement with me or is it just me by myself? Thank you. I'm just going to bring us down to reality here. I just finished, you know, the marriage course and we had 17 couples. We got real with each other. All right. So newlyweds and people, you know, young people, you know, I'm just going to bring it down to reality. It's hard. It's a tough slog. Some people are really easy to love. You know, some people are much harder to love. And we've got this call on our lives, right, to love thy neighbour, love our neighbour. And it's a commandment, but it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. And I want to just pull out a few things that I was thinking about this week and just see if you've ever been in this boat before. How can I love that person that's really frustrating me right now? How do I do that, God? How can I love that person when I can't do more than a few minutes in their presence before they start to grate on me? How do I do that, God? I'm getting real today. How do I do that, God? How can I love that person when I disagree with their lifestyle, I'm disagreeing with their choices and their actions? How, God, do I do that? 
how can I love that person when they haven't called or expressed any or shown any interest in my life and have disappointed me time and time again? Like, how, God? How can I love that person when we're just in two different seasons right now? How can I love my next child when I've got so much love for my first child? Like, am I going to have enough love for my next ones? Is there going to be enough God to go around? How do I love people when, when I wasn't shown any love? Or I wasn't modelled love growing up. How do, how do you expect me, God, then to go ahead and model that to others? So these are real spaces, you know, where people find themselves in with having to love others. And we can go f- grow frustrated with people. We can lose our patience People can get tricky. People can be complicated. People can disappoint and fail us. It can be depressing. And we can give up. We can not bother. We can cut people off. We can allow bitterness to grow, to take root in our heart. You know, some wisdom says, you know, a lack of love implies a lack of effort. So then then we just get into the cycle of, well, we'll try harder and harder And then we just find ourselves straining more and more and we're just in this vicious cycle. And you might find this challenging to hear today. And you may have never heard this. But our human love towards one another is weak and very limited. It will run dry. It will get empty. It will disappoint. It will fail. And I know that's not the best news to hear on Valentine's Day. (laughs) Or to others thinking, when I find that person, life is going to be good. It's going to be better. Woohoo. I'm sorry to say. (laughs) So, you know, what is the answer? What is the answer? There is an answer. So that's good. Yeah. And I want us to open up to 1 John chapter 4. And I just want to give you a bit of a background um, to 1 John. I love all these pastoral letters of John. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. John, they're quite small. But you know, John, he hung with Jesus a lot. John hung with Jesus a lot. And he mentions love over and over again in his, you know, congregational letters. So he was writing these letters to the Gentile congregations, but he also was writing them to all believers. So it's like this letter is for our congregation today. And John walked very, very closely with Jesus. You know, so John saw Jesus heal and he saw Jesus teach and he, and he saw Jesus die And he met him arisen and he saw him ascend. So he hung out a lot with Jesus. And he was writing these letters coming from a place of very close intimacy, very close dependence on Jesus. So I think, you know, his words carry a lot of weight because he he hung and he was close. So let's just see what he said. 1 John 4, 7. Dear friends... Let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. 
and we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid of the day of judgment, but we can face with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. We love each other because He loved us first. The truth is today that God is love. God is love. And I'll read verse 19 again. We love each other because he loved us first. So this is the first step here. This is key. And I would, I'm praying that we all can get this. We first, we're first to understand and experience and receive God's love before we can love others like he does. Before we can give away anything, we have to have it for ourselves, right? Otherwise, we're just writing blank checks. There's no deposit in the bank. They're all blank. We got nothing in the bank. The outpouring of God's love in our hearts is the work of Holy Spirit, no one else. It's something felt in the heart and not in your head. It's not... It's not our works, it's not, not your works, it's not me. It's, a, it's only by a supernatural working of Holy Spirit. Listen, this is, this is Romans 5.5. 5. I've been loving this Bible verse this week, preparing this message. Romans 5.5 5 says, And hope does not disappoint us. It doesn't disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. He has poured it out. And I believe this is what the Lord wants to do today. He wants to pour it out. He, he wants, to, I'm going to use the word unleash. He wants to unleash his love upon us today. This is, I believe this is what he wants to do. But before you want to receive anything, right? You know, you would want to know what, it, what it's about, what, what it is. Or, or how about this way? Or a realisation that you actually need it. So I want to teach into a few things today. The first thing I want to chat about is God's love is the source. God's love is the source. So the human heart, you know, we... We yearn to be loved and loved well, but I'm going to say it again. No human being is capable of offering such love. Each time we demand it from others, we can set ourselves up for disappointment, unfulfillment or frustration. And someone shared this with me once and um, God was revealing it to them. And then they came to a gathering. And don't you love it when God just gives you some gold? And, and it's just like this light bulb moment and it was happening in her mind and then she, God just revealed this gold and then she was just sharing it with everyone. She was like, God, just show me something and she was just giving gold to everyone. And this is what God revealed to them. We can't get perfect love from an imperfect person. Oh, <laughs> oh that is good. That is good. If you need to write that one down, I'm going to say it again, especially on Valentine's Day, right? This is, we can't, we can't get perfect love from an imperfect person. Oh, that's gold, just that right there. They are not the source. They're not the source. God's love is the source. God's love is the source from which all real love flows. And this might be something extremely new that you're hearing today. But a lot of society 
can place pressure on husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends, on our friends, on our family to meet our needs and to love us exactly how we would love to be loved perfectly. But we need to look to Jesus. We need to look to God because God is love. And he wants to dwell in our hearts and live in them so we can be, we can be living loved. Nothing compares to the love of Jesus. And our hearts can find perfect communion with God because he created us, right? And did you know, I love John 17. Jesus actually prayed a prayer for us. It's in John 17. If you're a believer, he prayed a prayer exactly about this. I'm gonna show you. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known, listen to this, in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now, that's a love trans- transfusion. That's a love transfusion. And we need to receive God's love into the very core of our hearts into every cell of our body, like liquid love just pouring in us and through us. And he can do this. He can do this and he does do this. And we need to come back to the fountain and sit under his love and receive it. Receive it. He wants to pour it out on you. And this is what we need first. We need an encounter with the Father's love. And we're allowed to ask him. We are allowed to ask him to do this. It sounds like this, Lord, allow me to experience your love in a much deeper way. And it's a very good prayer to pray. And if you have to pray it for months and months before you sense him answer it, I encourage you to do so. The second thing I want to just teach into is God's love will transform you. It'll transform you. I'm going to read again verse 16 and 17. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. That underlining is mine and I just want to pull out. I love it how it says, our love grows more perfect. So that is encouraging right there, right? That's encouraging for us because that brings hope not only to the Christian family or the Christian person, but also to the, the person that have never, never heard about Jesus or a family that doesn't walk with Jesus. I've just written down a few things of how God's love can transform us. So just listen to these things. As we live in God's love, we can bring transformation to a fatherless generation. God can raise you up to become a spiritual father or mother to sons and daughters. As we live in God's love, we can be a people transformed, especially those who weren't brought up in homes where affection or hugs or words of affirmation weren't, were said or done. God can transform us in these areas. As we live in God's love, it has the power to break cycles of family tradition through us. You know, some things can stop today because Jesus lives inside of you. As we live in God's love, the loneliest heart in this room can be encouraged. Not just in this room, anywhere. People watching online, wherever. The loneliest heart can be encouraged because you are living in God's love. The grieving heart can be comforted and the addicted heart can be delivered. And we can't do it by ourselves. We must rely on God's love. We must rely on an outpouring of God's love in us and on us. God's love does transform us. I I do believe this with all my heart. I've seen it in people's lives. And I was just 
umming and ahhing, you know, what, what story to share. And there's so many stories I could have picked of God's love transforming. And, you know, there was, um, I, I've got a great Heidi Baker story that, you know, if you want to hear it, I'll share it with you. And I've, there's books and I was just going, Lord, I wanted to just choose a story that it could just help you because it might speak into your life and, and bring it down a notch. And I know I might have shared this story before, but there's so many new people here that this is new to you. But when I first asked Jesus to come and live inside my heart, the very first thing that he prompted me to do was to get in the car and drive to my parents' house and tell them I love them. Now, you might be sitting there and thinking, oh, I just did that last night. Like, that's really easy. I've done that all my life. That's not hard, Tam. But I just want you to get that some families, you know, we all grew up different, right? My, I had a beautiful family. I was extremely blessed and loved by them. But, you know, hugging and um, soppy words and all that, just, it's not how we roll. We didn't, we didn't do that, you know. But that day he was saying, I want you to get in the car and drive over the house and tell both your parents you love them. So, you know, to be completely honest, I felt like a goose. I felt like an absolute idiot. I got in the car and I was like, this is going to be awkward, embarrassing. Um, like this is, this is just awkward. But I knew it was God because I'm thinking, Lord, there must be a, you must be real because if this was just Tam driving, it wouldn't happen. But I remember that experience of going over their house and walking into the door, door and it was awkward, embarrassing. It was, it was exactly that. But I said those words. And then the next thing after that, he said, that's awesome. Now what I want you to do is every time you greet your parents, I want you to give them a kiss on the cheek. <sighs> Again, you might be thinking, that's easy, Tam. <laughs> I do that all the time too. <laughs> it was new to us. It was new. But obviously God was doing something in me where I, I just wanted to see like change. And I wanted to just be obedient to what he was doing. And that was like 10 years ago when I first did that, for, you know, first um, peck on the cheek and and, and now it's a completely normal gesture. God's love does transform us. He can use you to invade spaces. Are there spaces God may be calling you to invade with his love flowing through you? And the third thing I want to share is, is that God's love is available today right now. And I really want to stress this point. God's love doesn't depend on our initiative or on our worthiness. We don't have to measure up to some standard or in order to be loved by God. We don't have to clean up our act before God can love us. Nope, nope, nope. God pours out his love to us us whether we deserve it or not. Romans 5, 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And you're allowed to receive it today. And it's available for you today. And the first step is opening up our hearts to God's love so that he can love others through us. The passage of 1 John we read, I just want to visit 9 and 10 again. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. God loves us first. And I was thinking about this as I was writing it. God loved us first, right? He created us. He created us. Now, if I created something or if I built something, I was thinking about it. Say if I built a house, which would never happen. <laughs> but let's just say I did, right? <laughs> if I built a house and I'm finished the house, I would, like, I, I would want a set of keys. I want my own set of keys. I would want full access to that house because I built it. It's like, that's mine. 
I want full access to it. I'm thinking I want it 24-7. Thank you very much. I will come in whenever I want to. I will lay on that couch. I will help myself to the fridge. <laughs> I will go to the, I'll go to any room I like because I created it. I built the thing. It's mine. I'll just barge in. I don't care if it's 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm just going to barge in. That's mine. I built the thing. Right? Jesus doesn't do that. He waits. He waits at the front door and he waits for permission. Hmm. He waits for permission from us. He's a gentleman in that. If it was me, I'd be barging in. I'd be up to the, like, let me try the fifth bedroom now, please, or however many bedrooms. I'll be in the pool by now. Jesus is still at the front door. To anyone here who has never asked Jesus into their hearts, I can't tell you to, and I can't do it, but I just encourage you, I encourage you to give him permission today to enter your heart and to fill it with his immeasurable and forgiving and eternal sacrificial love. And through Jesus as a sacrifice to take away your sins, you can receive new life, new love. Then, then you'll be living loved and you will never be the same again. He will transform you more and more each day as you're living loved and you're live loved by him. And if, maybe for other believers in this room right now, it's an encouragement to give him permission to love you in your pain, in your exhaustion and in your loneliness. I might get the band up if that's all right. Listen to um, author and pastor Max Licardo has got a great book um, about this. It's called um, A Love Worth Giving. And these were Max's words on one page. It says, God, God loves you personally, powerfully and passionately. Others have promised and failed, but God has promised and succeeded. He loves you with an unfailing love and his love, if you will let it, can fill you and leave you with a love worth giving. You're loved. And this, I believe, is what the Father's heart is speaking over us today. And I'd just love for you to receive it today, to open up your hearts and receive this. I was praying into this today, uh, for this week and I was like, Lord, what are, you, what are you speaking? These aren't my words. Lord, what are you speaking to the people today? Girls and ladies in the room, this is for you. Your heavenly Father says you're loved. You don't have to change anything about your appearance. He loves you just the way you are. He adores you. He adores everything about you. You're beautiful in His eyes. His eyes are full of love and He walks in front of you and He looks at you in awe over the beauty of His creation, you. And this is what He's saying. You might like to close your eyes and receive this. He's saying, come and agree with me with who I say you are. Agree with me that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He's saying, don't look to magazines, don't look to people, don't look to pictures and compare. Look to me and my picture of beauty, the unfading beauty of a gentle, and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. This is true beauty. 
He's saying over and over again, I'm your perfect love. I'm your perfect love. I'm your perfect love. I'm your perfect love. Give yourself permission to receive my love for you today. He's proud of you. Men, you aren't forget, forgotten today. God loves you too. He's proud of you. You don't need to achieve another thing to gain His love or prove yourself no longer. You're loved. You're accepted. You're protected. And for some, I felt Him whisper this morning to me, for some here in this room need to hear that you belong. You belong. He's saying you're not a failure. The Father's heart is saying, I love you when you're present, when you show up for your children, when you show up for your wife, when you show up for a friend. I love it when you love others like I do. And I will help you love like I do, son. Ask me to help you in this. You're not alone. I am with you every day and I'm pleased with you. And for some, he wants to say, well done, son. Some men in this room just need, need to hear the Father's heart saying, well done, son. Give yourself permission to receive that today. He's saying, I'm proud of you and I see you. And I love you, son. finish off with a story and um, it was during COVID and I wanted to mulch my yard. <laughs> was there anyone else that wanted to mulch the yard during COVID or was it just me? It's just me. I, uh, no men in the room? Oh, thank you, Dan. That's all right. I'm okay if I'm alone. It's all right. But I wanted to mulch my yard. I thought, oh, well, if I'm going to be stuck at home, I might as well do something. And uh, Mark's back was really bad at the time. And, you know, husbands and wives, you know how we've got agreements, you know, like you have to discuss things and then you're like, okay, I'm in an agreement. Let, that's our agreement. We chatted. I really had it on my heart to mulch my yard. Haddo's back was just giving him lots of curry. And he's like, babe, I can't help. Like, I, it's, not, it's not for me right now. I'm like, I'll do it. I will do it. I will do it. I want a shovel. Um, I'm, I need a good workout. Um, it's all me. Um, I completely agree that that's up to me. So that was our agreement, right? And I was totally okay with that. So I did the research and um, I found some really good mulch and I rang them up and they said, great, yep, this is a great price. And I said, um, they said, look, minimum delivery is this, this. And I was like, that's a great price. Hook me up, bring it around. And they just right at the end of the conversation just tagged on this, like, the minimum delivery um, is for 13 cubic metres. <laughs> Why do these things always just happen to me? <laughs> anyway, so they just quickly tagged that on. Um, 13 cubic metres, minimum delivery. And I was like, I'm a, I'm a, well, ladies, you might know what the size of 13 cubic metres is. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> so I was like, sounds great. Yep, bring it around. That's awesome. So I wasn't home the day that the truck came. <laughs> I don't know where you were, babe. You were there. And it was there. I just, you know, left. No, I was at work. I was working. And um, the truck came up our street, reversed, 
did one of these <laughs> and just dumped 13 cubic metres of mulch on my front lawn. Just a massive big dumping. I realised how much 13 cubic metres was right when I drove home from work that day and came home. I was like, that's the biggest mulch pile I've ever seen in my life, in my life. There was so much. I used a tiny little bit of that <laughs> to mulch my lawn. And then I just start, I had to start doing the call outs. I just had to start re going across the neighbor's street. And I said, man, I've got a pile of mulch. <laughs> I've got a pile of mulch, come. You, you can bless your garden. You can bless your garden with it. Cover the mulch, use the mulch. I've blessed mine. I had to start texting friends. I thought that might have done it. No, there was so much. I had to start texting friends saying, like I was calling Dan and, and everyone, come, I've got mulch. Come and bless your garden with mulch. There's so much of it. There's so much of it. It not only blessed me, but it was blessing everyone. There was so much of it. I had to just give it away. This is what it's like with God's love. I could measure my mulch. I could measure my mulch. It was 13 cubic metres. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I could measure it. Do you know what the fun fact is about God's love? God's love is immeasurable. Immeasurable. Do you know what that means? It means incapable of being measured. Incapable of being measured. That's how much God's love has. That's His stockpile. That's His resources, immeasurable. That's how much He has. That's how much He has. And I believe He wants to just pour it out today. He wants to back up His semi-trailer. He wants to pour it there and He wants to just come and dump it on us. And some people in this room will be filled up with the love of God that they will be going out and they will want to be sharing it with their neighbours, with the Burpengary community. I believe that people will be filled up so much that you'll be going to the ends of the earth because you'll be searching for people that you'll want to share the love of God. I truly believe that. I want it. I want it. Do you guys want it? Because He's just pouring it out today. He's pouring it out today and He's saying, come, come and receive my love. Come and receive my love. He's got His dump truck ready. He's got His dump truck ready and He's just going, have it, have it. That's what He's doing today. So when we struggle, when we struggle with things and when we struggle with those people, we need to come back and sit under his fountain of love and say, Lord, you've got to help me. Help me pour it out, pour it out to me, pour it out. And He does and He will. He does and He will. And I want us to respond today because I truly believe He's the source. He will transform you. And it is available right now. And there's three ways you can respond today. You can come and sit at the feet of Jesus today. And in His final song, He can just pour it out on you. Let Him pour it out on you. Let Him fill you up afresh with the love of God. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, today can be the day. It's available right now. And our prayer team will think it's an honour and a privilege to guide you in that prayer. And you can ask Jesus to come into your heart. I encourage you. And then others, if you are just struggling with those things, please come to our prayer team. And may they ask the Lord with you for help to love people, to love people. So we're gonna respond now in this final song as the worship band leads us. And I encourage you to come and sit at the feet of Jesus and let Him pour it out on you afresh today and it will mark you. It will mark you today. It will mark you today. I'm praying you will come.